classification of industries based upon a source of a raw material on the basis of a source of raw material the types of industries are categorized as agro based industries agro based industries on the basis of a source of raw material source of raw material first category of industries are the agro based industries agro based industries agro based industries those industries those industries obtain raw material these industries obtain raw material from agriculture from agriculture industries which obtain their raw material from the agriculture example cotton textiles jute sugar jute industries sugar industries vegetable oils vegetable oils jute cotton cotton textiles jute cotton textiles jute sugar sugar yes tea also very good garima tea also these are the industries which are obtaining directly their raw material from agriculture agricultural activities are known as agro based industries these are known as agro based industries silk production also industries which are obtaining their raw material vegetable oil edible oil vegetable oil vegetable oils are also extracted to as the agricultural production next are the mineral based industries mineral based industries mineral based industries so industries which are obtaining their raw material from a mining processes to the mining processes mineral based industries mineral based industries these industries obtain raw material from minerals obtaining raw material from minerals or a mining processes mining processes primarily these are the iron and steel industries aluminum copper aircrafts automobiles fertilizers petrochemicals oil refineries so many number of industries are there which are obtaining their raw material from minerals industries which obtain their raw material from minerals iron and steel aluminum smelting copper electrical appliances automobiles aircraft fertilizers oil refineries petrochemicals etc petrochemicals paint glass etc clear glass etc third forest based industries industries they are, which are obtain, uh, obtaining their industries obtaining their raw material these industries depend upon the these industries which use as the forest products as their raw material use forest products as their raw material as their raw material example rubber rubber natural rubber used for a manufacturing of a tires rubber furniture timber industry furniture paper paper furniture timber these are the examples of a forest based industries these industries are obtaining their raw material directly from the forest lands from the forest timber timber needs for a furniture paper rubber rubber are categorized under the forest based industries next marine industries marine industries marine industries industries obtain their raw material from sea and oceans industries which are obtaining their raw material from 
सी ओशन वेरी गुड अरमान पर्ल्स गरिमा सॉल्ट वेरी गुड पर्ल्स पी ई ए आर एल एस मैन्युफैक्चरिंग ऑफ सॉल्ट कॉर्ड लीवर ऑयल सी ओ आर डी कॉर्ड लीवर ऑयल कॉर्ड लीवर ऑयल फिशरीज लास्ट कैटेगरी पेस्टोरल बेस्ड इंडस्ट्रीज पेस्टोरल बेस्ड पेस्टोरल बेस्ड पेस्टोरल इंडस्ट्रीज these industries depend upon animals for their raw material very good arman leather leather industries industries honey will categorize under the forest honey it will categorize under the forest produce in these industries the pastoral based industries depend upon the animals animals for their raw material example dairy dairy d a i r y dairy leather woolen textiles woolen textiles leather dairy leather dairy woolen textiles silk can also categorize under this silk textiles silk textiles because of the cocoons are used for uh, obtaining the raw material when industries these industries silk will not categorize under the agro it will be as a categorize under the pastoral based silk textiles woolen textiles leather dairy production dairy production dairy poultry farming poultry meat flesh poultry woolen textiles silk textiles dairy and leather these are the industries categorized on the basis of a source of raw material on the source of raw material on the basis of a source of raw materials arman fishes it can be as used under the flesh source of a protein now the last category classification of industries based upon a weight of raw material weight of raw material two types of industries are there heavy industries and the light weight industries heavy industries those industries heavy are the such group of the industries which require raw material in a larger in quantities larger in quantities and heavier in weight heavy in weight heavy weight industries are also known as a weight loose weight losing industries heavy industries are also known as a weight losing industries why because when we when we extract the iron through the raw iron ore as per the average 1 ton 1 sorry 1 quintal of a raw iron ore used to extraction of a 40 to 50 kilograms of iron remaining 40 50 kg is the wastage this is as the wastage that's why the heavy industries the heavy weight industries are known as a weight loose industries weight loose industries weight loose industries very good garima iron and steel industries cement industry iron and steel cement industry iron and steel cement industry such industries require larger investment and use of a large amount of raw materials as well these industries are both capital and labor intensive heavy weight industries are the capital intensive as well as the labor intensive industries labor intensive industries labor intensive industries next are the light weight industries light weight copper smelting yes mishti next light weight industries 
लाइट वेट सच इंडस्ट्रीज विच कैन एलोकेट एट एनी पार्ट ऑफ अ कंट्री विच आर नॉट इंफ्लुएंस बाय लोकेशनल फैक्टर्स लाइट वेट इंडस्ट्रीज आर नॉट इंफ्लुएंस बाय लोकेशनल फैक्टर्स मीन्स दीज इंडस्ट्रीज रिक्वायर एज अ रॉ मटीरियल स्मॉलर इन क्वांटिटीज smaller in quantities and light in weight smaller in quantities and light in weight industries require raw material in a smaller in quantities and light in weight electrical goods very good ashin and garima electrical goods electrical appliances footwear stationery 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 and here we can't as a forget about cosmetics 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 pharmaceuticals pharmaceuticals which can be as allocated at any part of a country desired raw material in a smaller in quantities smaller in quantities and light in weight footwear electrical goods stationery leather goods pharmaceuticals 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 are no, also known as a foot loose industries foot loose these industries are also known as a foot loose industries reason it can be as allocated at any part of a country which are not influenced by the locational factors geographical factors are neither influence their location of a such industries for example most number of a pharmaceutical industries medicines are manufactured in a himachal pradesh these are set up in a himachal pradesh himachal pradesh is a favorable for a location of a most number of a pharmaceuticals pharmaceuticals so these are basically the capital intensive industries very good dhavnesh solan preferably used for the location of a pharmaceuticals in himachal pradesh these are capital intensive industries use of a machinery in a large scale required for a manufacturing of goods manufacturing of goods clear these are the major classifications of industries major classification of industries next are the case studies which are marked in a chapter in relation to the agro base and the mineral base industries agro base industries first agro base industries agro based industries agro base industries which are obtaining their raw material from a agriculture agriculture produce use as a raw material for manufacturing of goods are known as the agro base industries for example as sugar industries food processing cot cotton textiles jute vegetable oil edible oil food processing sugar jute cotton etc first case study is related with the cotton textiles textile industries indian textiles indian textiles have been famous have been famous since 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 11 12th centuries before of the britishers before of britishers britishers yes we are in here before of britishers indian cotton textiles demanded in a south western asia south western asia egypt europe egypt europe and the middle eastern countries the products 
products demanded in european countries as muslin the types of a cotton produced demanded in european industries as muslin as muslin bandhana these are the types of a cotton clothes manufactured at the time of a british or before of british age bandhana bandhana term derived from the tying and dyeing process first of all as the clothes were the tied then afterwards at the dye for making as a different patterns bandhana term derived from the bandhni bandhni jamdani chintz muslin bandhana jamdani chintz calico calico the type of a cotton cloth which returned back by the portuguese towards their country towards their country towards their country muslin chintz calico bafta jamdani bafta b a f t a bandhni bandhana these were the number of a cotton clothes which were as a high demanded in a european countries european countries european countries textiles is the most important agro based industry textiles are the most important agro based industries industries it employs 20 percentage of industrial workforce and contributes 4 percent in gdp textile industries provide as a 20 percentage of job opportunities and it contributes in gdp of a country as a 4 percent 4 percent textile industry is a self reliant industry self reliant industry self reliant industry and complete in value change in cotton textiles cotton textiles raw material to the consumer goods raw material to consumer goods manufactured through different manufacturing processes different manufacturing processes manufacturing processes first beginning separation of cotton seeds from cotton balls cotton seeds from cotton balls afterwards the cotton balls used in a spinning purposes spinning purposes in spin spinning cotton balls transform into yarn thread thread or yarn afterwards yarn used used for a fabrication for weaving purposes weaving weaving afterwards the manufacturing of a cloth cloth dyed into the different patterns colors dyeing dyeing then as a cutting stitching tailoring tailoring and afterwards as the packing packaging packaging so different number of a manufacturing processes are associated with the cotton textiles associated with cotton textiles for transformation of a raw cotton into the cloth into a cloth a large number of a clothes cotton clothes after the weaving after the weaving these are exporting towards the european countries as a raw material 
European countries as a raw material means as the final product. It is not as the manufactured in our country. After the weaving, clothes, cotton clothes are directly sending towards the European countries. European countries. During the British age, Indian weavers, they produce as a quality products by hand spinning machines and hand looms. After the industrial revolution, the power looms and the machines, power looms and machines were introduced. This gave a boost to the indigenous textile industry, throwing the thousands of the weavers out of the work as mill made cloth from England was a cheaper and better. Cheaper and better as compared to the Indian clothes. As compared to the Indian clothes, the foreign goods, these were as the cheaper and the better in their quality. India's first successful modern cotton mill, it was as a setup at a Bombay in 1854. It was set up at Bombay in 1854 by the Parsi entrepreneur, by Parsi industrialist. During as a time period of a Swadeshi movement in the 20th century, 20th century, Gandhiji preferred as the preferred the clothes which were manufactured by the Indian weavers manufactured by Indian weavers, which you read in a history, nationalism of India, nationalism of India. At that time, Gandhiji opted as a two of the ways, two methods as a Swadeshi and boycott. Through the boycott, they oppose as a Br British goods, but through as the Swadeshi, they preferred as the, those goods and the services, which were as a produced within as a India by the Indians. So through the Swadeshi movement, there was as a support given to the textile industry in India. Now, presently, there are the more than the 1,600 cotton and the synthetic textile mills are present in our country. They are present in our country. 1,600 cotton textiles and synthetic fiber. Synthetic fiber-based industries are present in our country. Most number of cotton textiles are concentrated towards the concentrated in a western parts of a country in Gujarat and Maharashtra. With support to this, as the cotton textiles are also located in a parts of a Tamil Nadu also, in parts of Tamil Nadu also, in parts of Tamil Nadu. So, what are the reasons responsible for the? What are the reasons responsible for? the growth of cotton textiles in a western parts of a country. Western parts of country. First reason responsible for this as availability of a black soil in Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh and Gujarat, supportive for the availability of a raw material for cotton textiles located in Gujarat and Maharashtra. Availability of a black soil region supportive for the growth of production of cotton in a parts of Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, and Gujarat. First reason. Second, humid weather conditions lies due to as a nearness of a coastal region of a Arabian Sea, which is supportive for the growth of a cotton textiles in a western parts. In a hot and humid weather conditions, hot and humid weather conditions, yarn strengthen thread strengthen as compared to the dry conditions, as compared to the dry conditions. Efficient third, efficient network of a roadways and a railways are collectively, uh, collectively make accessibility up towards the port cities. Accessibility towards the port cities of Bombay, port cities of Mumbai, Chennai, Kochi, Surat and Kandla. Mumbai, Chennai, Kochi, Surat, and Kandla. Ports are well connected with the railways and the roadways through industries. Fourth, as a large number of a cheaper labor available through the densely populated areas of Maharashtra and Gujarat. Cheaper labor, supportive, it is as available from the areas of Maharashtra and Gujarat. 
Next, fifth one is a supply of electricity. It has supplied to as the Tarapur nuclear power station, Tarapur nuclear power station of a Maharashtra, and due to as the existence of a Sadas Rover Dam, which has built over a, which is built on a Narmada River. Narmada River. It is supplied as the electricity for a growth of a cotton textiles in a western parts of a country. Banking and credit facilities are easily available in adjoining parts of Maharashtra because the Mumbai is known as our financial capital. Mumbai is known as our financial capital due to the existence of a stock market, share market, Indian share market present in a Mumbai because of which as a large number of a banking and a credit facilities are available for entrepreneurs to which they can borrow the money and invest for increasing the production, increase in production. Clear? So these are the locational factors influencing as a growth of a cotton textiles in a Western parts of a country. Western parts of country. In our country, Cotton textiles are generally worked to as the three systems. Cotton textiles work to the three systems. Cotton textiles work to the three systems. These three systems are the handloom, handloom, power loom, and mill sector. Mill sector. Three pattern processes are used for a Functioning of a cotton textiles mill sector. Second, as the power loom industries, power loom industries, and third, as the hand loom industry. Hand loom industry. Mill sector means as a small scale scattered units are there. Small scale scattered units, such units are responsible for the manufacturing of a one stage of a manufacturing of cotton clothes means one mill is responsible for ginning after the ginning after the separation of a cotton seeds from cotton balls they are selling their products to the spinning industry spinning mills spinning mills spinning mills purchase as a cotton balls and use it for a transform into the yarn. Spinning industries, spinning mills, transform the cotton balls into the yarn, into the thread. Afterwards, they're selling towards the weaving. So separately as a, these mills are performing, they are responsible for a manufacturing, for the manufacturing of a raw material into the other type of a goods. Such goods are the intermediate goods. These are not the final goods. These goods, it can't be as a use by the consumers to satisfy their needs. Satisfy their needs. Clear, Prabhnur? It can't use by the consumers to satisfy their needs. It needs as the finishing. Finishing in the sense, the manufacturing of a shirt, trousers to the cloth. So it has covered under the mill sector. Power loom are the those large scale industries, large scale cotton textiles, which are performing all these work in a one place at the same place. Within as a same industry, ginning after ginning as a spinning, weaving, dyeing, tailoring, and the packaging, all different works associated with the manufacturing or, or transformation of a raw cotton into the Shirt, such processes are occurred at a same place, about which the processes of a cotton textiles you learned in your seventh standard, a shirt in a market, civics book, a shirt in a market. So how does as the uh, material obtained from the farmers and towards as a, that particular product which is approaching towards the consumer, towards Arman. So all such processes, how they as work, these processes are work at a same place known as a power loom industries. For example, Bombay dyeing. Bombay dyeing. At a Bombay dyeing, they are purchasing as a raw cotton. Then afterwards, they are selling as a shirts and a trousers, as a finished goods, which can be as a consumed by the consumers. 
it has cover under the power loom industry in which as a sophisticated technology modern technology modern technology used for a manufacturing or transformation of a raw material into the finished goods clear power loom and a hand loom industry hand loom industry is associated with the hand loom industry is associated with the such weavers which are manufacturing the cotton clothes manually cotton clothes as manually through traditional skills through traditional skills now presently it has cover under the cooperatives hand loom industry is cover under the cooperative societies cooperative societies which are well known as a khadi bhandar udyog khadi bhandar udyog udyog which are supportive towards the rural economy khadi bhandar udyog supportive to the rural economy supportive to rural economy clear it is as a supportive to the rural economy spinning of the high quality of a yarn in the mill sector which is as a centralized sector located mainly in a maharashtra gujarat and tamil nadu weaving is in decentralized sector it provides scope to the inter corporate traditional skills and designs of weaving in cotton zari embroidery etc quality of a weaving is not the world class in decentralized sector this decentralization of a cotton textiles in a rural areas which provides as a large scale of a employment to the those traditional weavers which are weaving the cloth to the yarn and afterwards the weaving they are selling their products to the mill sector mill sector where the stitching tailoring such work afterwards as the finished goods selling in market at the high rates india export yarn of high quality to japan other countries to which india uh, indian cotton goods are exported and uh, exported to the united kingdom united states of america russia france east france east and central european countries etc india is the second largest capacity of a spindles producing as a 25 percentage of a world's high quality yarn after china due to the export of a quality yarn we cannot use in a weaving and knitting much except supplied from a fragmented smaller units located at a smaller towns of a maharashtra and gujarat clear so this much for today any questions